For those of you already sitting, thanks for having the courage to leave the coffee behind and to come and listen to us. Because you're, we're going to take you into a story on the game-changing world of quantum. And Catherine, what are we going to tell the people? That's a good question. Uh, before we start really about quantum, um, I would like to just come back on the mission of Proximus. So Proximus' next mission is really to help companies um, with their digital uh, challenges of today. So by bringing a multi jig network with fiber and 5G together, by helping employees to work from everywhere with any device, by making new use cases live, like you can also see in the innovation garden, garden with IoT, um, and with all the data always securely hosted in the cloud. But Jan, how does quantum fit in this story? Well, as you were here throughout our uh, story uh, later on, is that quantum will have an impact on our networks uh, in terms of securization, on security itself, on our cloud offering, uh, computing that we will offer through the cloud, and on IoT networks. Uh, on everything we do regarding IoT, well, quantum will bring new types of sensors to our networks. Okay. In fact, if we look at uh, quantum technologies, why it's so hot today, if we look at market observers in the first place, like gardeners and others you know, they put quantum technologies on top of their list the last two, three years. Uh, it's mainly, they're spotting in the top 10 list of, of trends. Why is that? Because quantum in the space of computing and communication is becoming more and more mature. That's important to know. A second thing is that quantum, if you look into the perspective of time, Quantum is not new at all. Quantum, in fact, is a technology that's more than 100 years old at its nascent. Uh, quantum was uh, used as a basis to develop the computers as we know them today. Was developed, uh, used to develop things like radars or solar panels or GPSs. It's all products and services we know. But what's important is that in the second generation of quantum that started in the 80s, a lot of new developments were made. If you look up quantum uh, on Wikipedia, you will see that in the last 10 and 5 years alone, hundreds of inventions were made that helped to develop quantum computing for the future. And what is interesting also to know is that quantum will not become a hype, well, it will become common known for all people in two years from now, which is not far away. Uh, because the United Nations declared 2025 as the year of quantum. Another thing that is, uh, or that makes, Catherine, that quantum uh, is becoming hot is investment. Uh, governments all over the world are massively investing in quantum technologies. Leading in this, in this investment round is China. Uh, you see that China alone is investing yearly about 15 billion in R&D in quantum. And if governments invest, also private companies and VCs invest, and that's what makes that quantum is so hot uh, these days. When we talk about quantum, there's tons of solutions. There's hundreds of solutions, applications, and services that will be developed in the future. But to make it easy for you and for us to understand, we categorize them in three groups, computing, communication, and sensing, and we will cover the three of them. Okay, thank you, Jan. It's already much clearer. It's not only science fiction, it's already a reality today. But if we zoom on quantum computing, can you tell us what it is exactly and how it differs from computers as we know them? Yeah, first, the first thing I can do is advise you to read a good book on quantum computing because it takes some time to understand, and this is not a joke, it's a quite complex beast. A quantum computer is made out of hundreds of components, inventions, innovations that help to sort of simulate a computer, and that's why we call it a computer, to simulate the computers as we know them today. But as this man, which is a, a famous scientist, said uh, already 35 years ago, quantum computers, what makes them very specific is that they work on an atomic scale and that makes that they're very interesting to mimic and to solve problems that we cannot solve with classical computers. Like, for example, better weather forecasting or 
earthquake forecasting or climate change analysis. These are things that are very close to nature and we cannot do with classical computers. But if you ask the difference, and I really refer to, to read a good book, and, and it's not a joke here, uh, there's a lot of things that, that make that quantum computers are different from classical computers. And it's about comparing apples and oranges. Just, just one thing. A classical computer, a classical processor as you know it, in a, in a laptop or, or even in your smartphone, can contain more than 10 to 20 billion small transistors that each store a very small fraction of data. The most advanced quantum computers today can only store 1000 bits of data, but with these 1000 bits of data, for some things, they can already be more performant than classical computers. One thing I should add here, and I'll let you read the rest, is that quantum computers will not replace the computers as we know them. They will not even replace supercomputers. Quantum computers will come along next to classical computers to solve very specific problems. That's very important to say. Another thing that uh, we wanted to show you is what it does a quantum computer look like? Uh, there are many kinds, uh, many sorts of quantum computers, but most look like this, like a big fridge hanging at the ceiling. Why a big fridge? Because quantum computers, because they work with atoms, with electrons, trapped ions, and so on, they need to work in isolation, isolation from the outer world. Uh, they need to, to work at very low temperature, with very little interference, with very little noise around them. And that's why a quantum computer today is such a, a big thing hanging at the wall. But in fact, the quantum processor, the ones that does the processing, sits in here. It's, it's just a very, very fra small fraction of this big fridge. As I said already, quantum computers, so far, there's a number of algorithms that are written specifically for them, but they cannot do a lot. They can search very fast through lots of information. They can search very fast to huge databases, or they can search to, for example, things like routes. Eh? Uh, route planning for logistics or airline companies can be done very fast with quantum computers already today. Uh, already today, and you see here a number of applications specifically under development for some industries or cross, uh, cross industry, cross sector. Okay, great. I will for sure read the book, but it's already more clear what quantum computing is. But are there any downside or any challenge we should be aware of? Uh, indeed, uh, Catherine. Normally, what we always say is that with every threat, there comes an opportunity. You know that. In this case, it's not, it's just the other way around. With the opportunity comes the threat. One of the algorithms that has been developed years ago and that made that quantum is developing so fast now is Shor's algorithm. And it's an algorithm that make that you can factor a huge, a large uh, uh, number, a very big number, and that you can come to the two figures that were made to create this number, uh, and it, it should ring a bell uh, in, in the ears of the people that work in IT here, because everything that we do in terms of cryptography uh, to secure our data is related to that. This means in practice that in, we think, seven to ten years from now, quantum computers will be powerful enough, powerful enough to break the code. And that's why already today we have to start protecting our data and protecting our networks on which the data runs. In fact, Europe knows that since quite a while and Europe uh, is, is investing heavily in the protection of our networks uh, in all 27 countries and across these countries they have the ambition to help us build quantum safe fiber networks and quantum safe, safe satellite communication because these are the two that can be protected physically by quantum technology. I will not go into the details, but there's two ways to protect your data uh, in the future, even more than you already do today. The first has to do with post-quantum cryptography. That's what I just said. Uh, if data can be hacked in the future, you have to make more 
robust and solid ways to secure your data. This is what we call today post quantum cryptography or becoming uh, crypto agile as we as we also also say and what you will see is that companies organization governments all like you are in the room in a couple of years from now you will all have like you had a, a digital transformation plan in the in the past you will all have a data transformation uh, plan uh, ready uh, with with re with regards to to the data you you store in, in your organization. And then there's another thing, that's post -quantum crypto, uh, next to post-quantum cryptography, that's PQC, um, that's QKD, sorry, and QKD, quantum uh, distribution, quantum key distribution, uh, is a way to physically protect your data. Again, uh, uh, if we look here at, at the graph, we put the graph here because it's a very well-known one. Uh, if you read scientific papers about quantum, experts think that by something like 3032, and that's not far away, uh, some countries, uh, and I will not name here, some countries will be able to hack the quantum system and uh, the quantum code uh, using the, the short al short algorithm. And that's why we have to start now protecting uh, our data. The second thing is that we, uh, as Proximus, we see it as our duty next to that to also protect our networks, to better even protect our networks. And that's why we are already today uh, doing first implementation tests of with QKD, where we put this physical protection layer over our fiber networks. In fact, what you will see in the coming years, uh, because this technology is quite mature already, uh, the, 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 the products are there, the physical the physical devices are there, and they are just a little bit too expensive today, but it, prices will go down very quickly. What we will see is that governments, utility companies, banks, all organizations that have critical networks will start to adopt these new technologies very soon now. Okay. Voilà, Catherine. Yeah, very, very clear. So if I understand, quantum represents not only an opportunity, but also a risk that's already really becoming real in the coming years. But if we know, you said in the beginning that you had quantum communication, computing, but also quantum sensing. What can you tell us about sensing? Yeah, quantum sensing is a strange beast, but in fact it is not. Uh, we all know atomic clocks. Uh, and just to give you an idea, an atomic clock misses a second in time in over 14 billion years. Uh, so it's quite accurate. Uh, an MRI scanner, we know, yeah, an MRI scanner in the hospital, it can look through your body quite accurately. GPSs are underway, uh, quantum-based GPSs that are millimeter precise and that not even use satellite communication anymore. Uh, three examples just to say that quantum sensors will come on top of the IoT sensors as we know today, but they will be up to 100,000 times more precise than the sensors we know today. Some are already on the market, but most of them are still under development. Okay, so and for the future, what should we know about uh, how to further uh, work on quantum for the organizations? Well, maybe we should not talk about the future anymore. Huh? We, we've covered the future already, but it's better maybe to talk about today. What can we in this room already do today? At Proximus, a couple of years ago, we brought together a team of experts, multidisciplined, from different teams, enterprise team, sales teams, pre-sales teams, uh, people in our, working in our, in our network environment, in our data centers, and day in, day out, we work together to find out what is the best future solutions for us. As I said in the beginning, with quantum you can do a lot of things, so we advise you to make choices, to isolate, be it in communication or be it in computing or for some here in the room in sensing, eh, to isolate what is really the problem that you want to tackle and where potentially quantum can help. Um, and that's the first thing you have to do. Bring these people together, isolate the problem and start to work on it. Reach out, that's what we do 
to your vendors uh, because they have already deployed or they are already deploying certain tests abroad in other countries around the globe whatever and also tap into communities uh, communities ecosystems uh, in belgium and abroad uh, conferences go to conferences and listen in on what others are doing in your sector uh, wh where you can learn from and at the end, what you will have to do is, like with every technology, you will have to develop a sort of a strategy for quantum going forward for the coming five to ten years, because this will assure that the people you have been training in the domain of quantum will not leave your, your, your company or your organization. Okay, thank you. So it's really now that it's starting and it's now that we have to anticipate to prepare the future and to start a strategy like you say. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's what I wanted to say. Don't invest too much. Don't take risk. Uh, go, go to your vendors. Come to Proximus. Talk to us. We, we have three, four years advance on the topic and we will be eager to help you. And we thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. It was very clear and in 20 minutes you succeeded to make Quantum available for us in the timing. Indeed. 18 minutes. 18 we minutes, wow. <laughs> Proximus next. Think possible.